So I spent the last 10 years in an obsessive quest to find the best way to build muscle, get lean, and ultimately have the body that I wanted. And one of the ideas that appealed to me the most was lean bulking. How do you build muscle without gaining body fat? I didn't want to go through these long bulks where I put on a lot of weight and have to go through a, a long cut to get rid of that weight. I wanted something more sustainable. I wanted to stay in that 10 to 15% body fat range all year round, feel good, look good. And this is what led me to discover a few key principles for lean bulking that you need to know on your journey. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly what those principles are. So let's get right into it. So if you've been lifting for a while and you wanna do a lean bulk, the first thing you need to know is that gaining muscle without gaining any body fat will be unrealistic. And this is the honest truth that I have to tell you because some percentage of the weight gain will come from body fat. And what we're doing here is we're minimizing that percentage to a more reasonable amount because refusing to gain any body fat will seriously limit your progress. Now, does this mean that you should gain 20 pounds in the next three months? No, it means that you should be able to accept some fat gain in exchange for gaining muscle. Now, if you're someone who's been overweight in the past, like I have, I understand that even the thought of gaining weight deliberately can be very uncomfortable, especially if you're someone who's been trying to get rid of body fat for a long time. Now you finally did it. Now it's time to gain some back. It can be a huge fear that you will have to overcome to have a productive lean bulk because one of the biggest mistakes people do make in this phase is that they get paranoid as soon as they gain half a pound of body fat, they panic, they go back into a calorie deficit to lose that body fat, and they never fully commit to a lean bulk, which ends up limiting their progress, they get stuck in permacutting, looking exactly the same year to year. And now that we got that out of the way, let's talk training. And you probably heard about a lot of training mistakes, such as not having a training program to begin with, not doing exercise with good form, not resting enough, not keeping track of your workouts anywhere, so you're just doing random things. All those are valid mistakes. But there's one big issue that I see why people aren't getting results, why they're not building muscle, and that is a lack of consistent high levels of effort and progression. This is one of the reasons most people you see in the gym will look exactly the same year to year despite showing up consistently. And if you look at them closer, you'll notice that they're never really pushing themselves to 100%. And on the other hand, their progressive overload is lacking. They're doing the same amount of reps, same amount of weights, same amount of sets, and their strength levels overall aren't that high. And objectively speaking, there's no reason for their body to build more muscle. Why would it? It already has enough to do what they're trying to do. And naturally, we don't want to push ourselves. So this is something you have to learn to do to really embrace those high effort, uncomfortable sets that come with a lot of pain, that are pushing the limits. And no amount of programming or science can really work around this. This is something you have to learn to do in the gym. And it's also mentally draining. You have to maintain good form throughout the entire set. And I'm not saying you should be maxing out every single workout, of course, you do need to know when to take a step back, but you should have the ability to show up and give it your 100%. And only you know if you gave your 100%. Nobody on the outside can tell, but you can tell if you have anything left in the tank or if you really gave it your best. And that ability to push yourself is really what's gonna then enable that progressive overload and will maximize the results from training. Now that we got training out of the way, let's talk diet. And this is really the difference between dirty bulking and clean bulking. We know we can't force feed muscle growth just by eating a bunch of extra food because that will lead to excess body fat gain. For a lean bulk, we're looking for a small caloric surplus. I would recommend gaining no more than 1% of your body weight per month. And this is gonna probably be around 150, 200 calories extra above maintenance for most people. So we're not talking about feasting every single day. We're talking about a small surplus, couple of pieces of fruit or something you really enjoy, and that is it. And with that caloric surplus, I recommend being a bit more strategic. For example, if you're going on a vacation for the next two weeks and you're just going to be doing some light body weight training, maybe some activities and some resistance bands training, well, there's no point in being in that surplus. You want to go down to maintenance, just maintain what you have, and then when you return to a strong training stimulus, then you go back up, increase those calories. And this is how you're going to prevent gaining some unnecessary body fat throughout your lean bulk. 
bulk. And with macronutrients, the most important macro is the like button. So you wanna make sure to destroy that like button as hard as possible to see some extra gains and jokes aside, means a lot to me, so please go ahead and do that. The most important macronutrient from your diet is your protein intake. And I would recommend setting your protein at one gram per pound of your target body weight. And then you split that protein intake around a day in three to four servings, and you will be able to maximize your results by doing that. Now, the next most important thing when it comes to lean bulking is setting up regular cleanup phases. What I mean by this is that as you're lean gaining, you will eventually hit that 16 to 90% body fat range, depending on what you're comfortable with. And there you want to do a short fat loss phase to lower your body fat percentage, and then you will go back to gaining in the future. So it is one step back to do two steps forward. And I would recommend dropping your body fat by around 5%. So if you've gotten up to 16%, you go down to 11, maybe even 10 if you want to push it a little bit. If you're up to 19, you go below 15, and then you just continue gaining. This is what I personally done over the last three years. I've spent the majority of my time just lean gaining, and then I would do these short six to eight week, a bit more aggressive, losing body fat while holding on to all my muscle. And that's been working out really great because I've been seeing some good gains from that. And I feel like that little bit of a break from gaining from time to time is a welcome break because it also reveals how much muscle you've gained. Now with gaining muscle, the most important thing here is to understand that this is not gonna be a linear process. Like sometimes you won't see much measurable gain on the scale for several weeks and then suddenly you're gonna get a spurt of growth. This is why it's important that you don't get obsessed about daily weigh-ins or what's happening on a weekly basis as much as really looking at monthly trends and seeing where you're headed and focusing on strength improvements and physique photos and tape measurements rather than obsessing about exactly what's happening on the scale every single day. And gaining muscle is a slow process, especially if you're someone who's been lifting weights for a while now, and this is where patience is essential for your success. The other thing that's gonna help you is making sure you hit that subscribe button below, making sure to enable notifications by hitting the bell icon. Details for coaching also in the description below. Check those out and I will see you in my next video.